Today on Muscle Car, it's the right way to build a full race-ready 10-point roll cage for our Dodge, complete with swing-out bars. Plus, we'll head to America's ultimate Mopar Boneyard for original parts for our compact Garth. Hey y'all, last time we upgraded our front suspension and with the help of Scott Winnie from s and Race Cars, laid in an entire back half kit into our 74 Dodge Dart. Project business time. This car is gonna be a blown white knuckle street strip A body with big power and massive rubber. Now in the process, we cut a lot of sheet metal and bracing out of our Dodge. So to keep it from folding up like origami going down the track, we've got to get a full on cage put in this thing. The s &W sent us every tube that we need to keep us up to spec. The cage that we're going to put in this Dart is uh, one of our 10 point kits. It's made out of uh, 134 wall inch and 5 8 tubing. Not only does it make the car safer, but it stiffens the car up, ties everything together. Before we can start installing our cage, we've got to build a brace that connects from the subframe connector back over to the rocker panel. All right, we're looking at about a 12 and a half there. But we've got to cut the floor out also. So we need to go ahead and mark that and get it out of the way. I'll use a Matco die grinder with a cutoff wheel to clear out the sheet metal. Then I'll run it off the rocker with an air chisel. Once the surface is prepped, we can move on. We've got our tubing cut for our brace, but before we can do that, we've got to weld on a plate just like we did back here. The reason you want to weld on the plate is it actually broadens the joint. It gives you a little more reinforcement because if you weld it just right around here, it could rip off on this thinner sheet metal. First thing we got to put in there is the main hoop. Why? Because everything gets attached to it. Because right there is where that bar is going to come in contact first. Now it's time to attach the main hoop to the structure of the car. Now to do this, we're going to use these outriggers over here that we added. Now the wall thickness of these is adequate to attach the roll bar directly to. That means we don't have to add the plates. But if you're mounting it to, say, the floor, then you do have to add the plates. That way your thickness is up enough to meet specs. It never hurts to double check your measurements to see that you're still square before you tack your tubes in. Now with Rick properly installed in the car, <laughs> we've got to do a measurement between this back bar and the back of his head, because you want it to be within six inches of your helmet. Come on, let's hear a comment now about my big head. Well, that's regardless. I know it's coming. Now right there, we're right at seven, but if you was to add in the thickness of a helmet, plus his ego, we're well within six. <laughs> now we need to determine the height of our rear seat bar. You want it four inches below your shoulder. Nobody move and nobody gets hurt. A rubber mallet does a great job of massaging the tubes into place, and then it gets tacked in. We're ready to put on our rear braces, but we got a little bit of sheet metal still in the way here, but that's all right. It's nothing that the saw ain't gonna fix. Problem solved. Now these braces are gonna run from the rear frame rails all the way up to the main hoop. And with our angles marked, we can chop on these as well. After the break, the Dodge gets a totally tubular treatment. Business time gets built up inside like a fortress. And are you looking for some Dodger Plymouth parts? You may want to talk to these guys. Hey guys, we're about knee deep in a roll bar territory here with our Dodge Dart. I'm getting all the tubes cut and fit that's going to attach onto our main hoop. Now these rear bars, I'm going to tack them in the rear, but not the front. I'll explain why in a second. We got our halo cut and notched and ready to weld onto our main tube. Now this thing serves a couple purposes. It attaches the front bars to the main hoop and it helps protect the roof from caving in just in case you try to make it down the track on your lid. Now I'm not going to tack these bars to the main hoop quite yet because I still need to come in here with a halo. Now I need this in place though so I can get the halo in the right position. Now once it's tacked, I got to lean this forward to weld the back side of it. So these are actually going to act as my placeholders for when I put this whole thing back up in place. Then I can weld that. 
We can now move on to the front bars, which will complete the main part of the cage around the driver's compartment. We want to keep the bars nice and tight, tucked into the dash, to keep them out of the way. That means we're going to put the bottom of it about right here. And since we'll be marrying it to the floor pan, we have to lay down one of these thick plates that come with the kit so that our footing will be thick enough to pass inspection. With the top of the tube, you want to make sure to place the bar parallel with the A pillar. That way, when sitting in the car, it's not really obstructing any of your view. You want to keep it out of your line of sight. Also, it's okay to place the tube on the outside of the radius of your bend. That way, it gains you a little room around your steering wheel. This front glass is ate up and was going to go away anyhow. So now's a good time to chuck it. One good way to make your notches for your tubes is to use a grinder. It lets you have a lot of freedom when it comes to the shape of your notches. Well, it looks like that fits pretty good. Now we got to put our plate in, trim off just a little for it. Mark where we want the plate to go and burn it into place. First, I'm going to burn away some of the old seam sealer so I don't have to fight with it while I'm trying to weld. With the top of the plate burned in, I'll heat and bend the rest of it to match the contours of the floor. And as different points make contact, I can weld them to the floor, then continue shaping the plate. I can set my tubes into place and pop it in and check to make sure my door and windows work like they're supposed to. Once I know that, I'll burn it in real nice. Sweet. Well, we just about got the cage buttoned up in this thing. All we lack is a few more tubes. Shoot, when we're done, this thing's gonna be tougher than woodpecker lips. That's pretty tough. Stick around and see what you can do about having to contort around door bars to get into your race car. Then ride along with the guys and see what 60 acres of Mopars look like. Hey guys, and we're ready to keep moving forward on installing the roll cage into our Dodge. We've got the main hoop, seat bars, rear bars, halo, and the A-pillar bars all tacked into place. And now we need to install the floor bars. Now these are required if the floor has been heavily modified or eliminated. I think this car falls into that category. Now this will help tie the back end into the front end. Plus, if this thing ever tries to crawl over a guardrail like a spider monkey, give us a little bit of extra protection. And just like we did with the other bars, we'll cut it down to size. Then use a grinder to notch it and give it a nice fit. We got the sidebars ready to go in. They're all trimmed and fit and cut, ready to get tacked in. Now I already know that this bar is gonna set into the right place because when we had a seat in here, this bar right here came just about here across my back. And by regulation, the sidebar needs to be between your shoulder and your elbow. So I already know that this is gonna be in the right spot. Now there's still a couple bars that need to be put in place, but we're not gonna put them in quite yet. We've got the dash bar that either needs to go down underneath here, in which case it may be interfering with our feet and our legs trying to get to the pedals. It could go across here, but that means <laughs> that the glove box door and the gauges are gonna be blocked forevermore. Or we could move it up a little bit higher, keep it tighter to the dash, but then it could be interfering with the steering wheel. So we still got a little bit of stuff to work out, but I think I wanna get the gauges installed, get the new dash in, get the rest of that stuff in place, and then we'll deal with that bar. But there is one last thing that we can do to our roll cage, and that's install a swing out kit. Now the sidebars for safety, well they need to be there, but installing a kit like this makes it a whole lot easier to get in and out. Now it does look a little bit confusing like this, but once it's installed, it'll all make sense. Now the first step in installing a swing out sidebar is cutting up the bar that you just welded in place. Now these brackets need to sit right over the top of wherever it is that you cut through that too, because half of it's gonna be welded and the other half is gonna be where the actual locator pin goes in. So this cut needs to be far enough back that you're gonna be able to get in and out of the car without catching your back on it, but down low enough that it's not gonna catch on your quarter panel either. Now, anytime you wanna make a nice straight cut on a tube like this, a nice little trick is to use a hose clamp because the hose clamp is gonna center itself on that tube. That way you know 
you've got a straight cut. I'll start the cut using a big grinder with a cutting wheel on it, but I'm gonna switch to a smaller one to finish it since the tube may move and I don't want that big grinder to bind up and plant a couple hundred cutting wheel shards in my face. Now you can kind of see where the bolt is gonna go through there and actually form the hinge, which is gonna let that bar come out. But that means that I need to go drill a hole and install my sleeve. And with the hole drilled for the sleeve, I can burn it all in and notch out the end of the tube to give it room to swivel in the hinge. Then we can pop in the latch at the top, mark this end and install the sleeve. We got it in there nice and smooth and it opens and shuts with no problem. And that's gonna make getting in and out of this thing a heck of a lot easier. Now that's about as far along as we can go with a roll cage for now until we get the drivetrain in, which as I mentioned earlier, we don't have yet. But I can give you a hint as to what we're gonna be putting in that engine compartment. It starts with an H and ends with Emmy. Coming up, it's the big Mopar graveyard in the sky. Well, actually it's in Alabama. You're watching Muscle Car. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Muscle Car collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Hey guys, now you may have noticed we're on a little bit of a field trip today, and that's because we're on the hunt for some odds and ends for our little dart project that we like to call business time. One of the things we're looking for is a pair of bucket seats, because we want to keep our car all Dodge, instead of doing it the easy way and just throwing in a pair of race seats. Now 74 darts like ours, well, they had some seriously huge bumpers, and we're looking to reduce the amount of real estate that she takes up on the front end and her butt end. And one way of doing that is to swap those bumpers out for 73 in earlier style. And since we're on the hunt for a few original Mopar pieces, we knew exactly who to call. These guys. Stevens Performance in Anderson, Alabama is known as the world's largest vintage Mopar salvage operation. They've been recycling old school Dodges and Plymouths since 1976. If anybody can hook us up with these pieces, we know they got us covered. And the guy who holds the pink slips to some of the coolest cars on the planet is this guy right here. Mr. Ted Stevens, how you doing, man? Good, Rick, nice to meet you. Hey, now when they say that you have the largest vintage Mopar dismantling yard on earth, how many acres are you guys taking up? Uh, right now we're at 58. Uh, started at five, and then it's grown steadily since then. Pretty good sized chunk of dirt. How many cars do you have on there? Somewhere between two and 3,000. Darts, demons, dusters, challengers, chargers, cudas, furies, you name it. From 1962 to 1974, we've got if it. If Mopar made it, you got it. We have it. Well, let's sneak out to the yard and see what we can find for our old dart. What do you think? Let's go. After you, sir. <laughs> oh, man. Ted, is that what I think it is? Uh, yep, that's a real Daytona, killed by a cement truck in Gadsden, Alabama in 1971. We bought it from a guy that was using it for a yard ornament, so we're basically doing the same <laughs> thing. It hits the heart in the right front, drove the spindle up to the rocker panel, wrinkled the roof and everything all up. You know, it wasn't repairable yeah. when this happened. But so it's been sitting like this since 1970? 1971. If you think that the same inventory has been sitting around here since the 70s, getting picked apart, think again. They're constantly on the hunt for fresh cars. This the one? This is it. I think this set here will work good. They're out of a 72 model. They got the right tracks and everything on it, so it should work out well. Since we're building kind of a custom car here, we don't have to be so year specific. No, no, I'll get this one. Get that one, Tommy. <laughs> Yeah, they really don't look that bad. All they need is a set of covers on it, and they'd look good. This one works. We just need a car to put around them. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that really sets Stevens apart from your average wrecking yard is these guys don't just chop cars up to get what they need. They're more like surgeons. They very carefully dismantle these things and save every little bit and piece, because you never know what the next guy's going to need. Where you want it? Thank you much, sir. You're welcome. Holy cow. We put this thing on a diet. 
Even the guys that work here only have eyes for Mopars. And old Rex here... Rest of them junk. Well, he loves these things. High dollar merchandise. <laughs> We found the bumpers and seats we wanted, but there's no way that we could leave without looking at some of the old cars and talking to Ted about some of his unique pieces. Up here on top of the hill, we got a 7446 pack Challenger, plum crazy purple. This is a 72 Challenger Rally. These cars had a unique stripe package. It started in a scoop that was mounted on the fender here, ran back on the fender onto the door. I'll show you what it looked like on the door right down here. And this is where it comes back onto the door here runs down the store, heading toward the quarter panel. There's a story in how every single one of these cars ended up here. And man, we wish we had time for all of them. But we did manage to burn the whole day on the ones that we could. I think these parts are gonna throw some life back into our old Dodge. And it's a good thing there's people around like Mr. Ted that's keeping these Dodges on the road. I wanna say thank you. Tommy, come back anytime. Be glad to help you with your Mopar needs. Well, it's about time to get this stuff back to the shop and keep rolling on our DART project. If you guys have any questions about anything that you saw on the show today, hop on over to PowerBlockTV.com and check it all out. But for this week, we're out of time. So until next time, we're out of here.